Hi everyone. Welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. I'm your host David Tear, and this is my second video on how to be a human calculator. Today I'm going to talk about how you can calculate square roots in your head. As a matter of fact, you can do it uh, if you're if you're good at you know just doing division in your head. You can actually calculate square roots uh, you, to about three decimal places. Uh, which I believe I can do. I haven't done too many of these calculations, but it's not that hard. So anyway, let's begin. So what's the trick to calculating square roots? Well, there's a very uh, um, uh, well-known algorithm. As a matter of fact, it was discovered in, in ancient Rome, I believe. It's called Heron's method, or Alexander. Heron, or hero of Alexandria, was an ancient... Greek uh, mathematician around uh, 2,000 years ago. He came up with this uh, method for computing square roots. Uh, and it turns out to be a very, very uh, uh, accurate uh, method. Um, it's actually a special case of the newton raphson method. Uh, but anyway, enough of that. So how does this work? Well, suppose we want to calculate the square root of some number x. So we're given some number x, we want to calculate the square root. We call that square y the square root of x so the first thing we do is we make a guess of y uh, um, we just call that guess a zero and I, i'll show you how to make a good guess a good first guess uh, uh, and then and then this is this is an algorithm this is an iterative procedure so we have this index on a which i'm calling n we set n equals zero that's just we initialize it so then uh, a zero we already set to uh, uh our initial guess, but then to get our next uh, value, uh, a a n plus one, in this case a n one, we take the um, the mean of a n and x over a n. Um, we just take a n plus x over a n and divide the result by two. This kind of makes sense because because this thing we're calculating here is what's called the arithmetic mean of a n and x over a n. We know that the geometric mean namely the square root of the product, a, a n times x over a n, that's just the square root of x, that is the thing we want. And it turns out that uh, arithmetic and geometric means are usually pretty close. And the closer uh, the numbers on the end point, you know, a n and x over a n, if you made a good initial guess of a zero, then x over a zero should be close to a zero, which means that the arithmetic mean of a zero and x over a zero should be very close to the geometric mean, which is just what we want. So that's the idea of why this algorithm works. But anyway, then if, if uh, you know, usually you only have to do about one iteration. If you make a good initial first guess, after one iteration, you're already probably within about uh, one part in a thousand. <laughs> so it's not really necessary to go further, especially if you want to do this in your head. If you want to do this in your head, I think about one one iteration is about as many as you can usually do. It's as many as I can do, um, but that's usually good enough. So if you want to keep going, you know, I mean, this is a computer algorithm. You can actually write a computer program to calculate square roots as accurately as you want using this method. Uh, just three or four iterations, you're probably already getting about 20 decimal place uh, accuracy. <laughs> like I said, this method converges very, very fast. But for our purposes, it's probably just enough to do one iteration. And I'm going to show several examples of this. So let's start with an easy example. How about the square root of 2? Um, a lot of you might already know the square root of 2 is about 1.4. But let's pretend we didn't know that. How could, how could we estimate the square root of 2? Well, we know that um, uh, 2 lies between the squares of 1 and 2. Uh, the square of 1 is 1, and the square of 2 is 4. So that means the square root of 2 has to lie between 1 and 2. And a good uh, initial guess might be 1.5, just split the difference. Um, let's see what happens if we let a0 equal 1.5. Well, we just apply what iteration of a Heron's method. We have a1 is 1 half times a0 plus 2 over a0. In this case, uh, um, uh, x is 2. So uh, we always put x in the numerator of the fraction on the right. And, and plugging in a0, we get 1 half times 1 plus 5 
plus two over one plus five. Here's where you have to do some mental arithmetic. Two over one plus five, if you like, that's four thirds. Um, that's one and a third. Um, and one third is uh, 0.3 repeating. Uh, um, well, we could just round it to 0.33. So we get uh, 1 half times 1 1.5 plus 1.33. 1 1.5 plus 1.33 is 2.83. I don't think any of these uh, calculations are that hard to do in your head, at least for me they're not. <laughs> and with a little practice, you could probably do it too. So you get 2.83 over 2, and then you just mentally divide by 2, which isn't really hard for me. Um, and the answer you get in this case is 1.415. And uh, it turns out that that is already very close, like I said, within about one part in a thousand of the actual answer, which is 1.14421 approximately. So uh, we did really good with our first example, just using one iteration. And you can do all this in your head, or at least I can. Um, let's do another example. Uh, how about the square root of seven? I think this one's a little bit harder. Let's try it. Well, again, uh, 7 is between the squares 4 and 9. 4 is 2 squared. 9 is 3 squared. So we know that the square root of 7 has to be between 2 and 3. Let's split the difference again, and let's start uh, with 2.5. Um, that's our value of a0. So now we're, our a1 is going to be 1 half times 2.5 plus uh, 7. That should be a 7, not a 2. 7 over 2.5. Um, and uh, it turns out 7 over 2.5, you can do that exactly. That's just 14 over 5, which turns out to be 2.8. So you're going to get 2.5 plus 2.8 over 2, and 2.5 plus 2.8 is 5.3. So 5.3 over 2, I think that's pretty easy to do uh, in your head. That turns out to be 2.65. Once again, that's very close to the actual answer, 2.64575. So this works for pretty much any number you start with. But uh, let's do a third example. Uh, I was just doing one-digit examples. Let's try a two-digit example. It's really not any harder with two digits. Same idea. So let's try the square root of 46. Well, uh, 46 happens to be between 6 squared, which is 36, and 7 squared, which is 49. So let's, again, split the difference. Uh, um, let's try to start with a naught equals 6.5, see what we get. Well, again, uh, use here on this formula, and uh, you're going to get 1 half times 6.5 plus 46 over 6.5. This is a little bit of a tricky division to do in your head, but um, if you multiply 65 by 7, you get 45.5. That's just a little bit less than 46. You have a difference of 0. 0.5, and... 0.5 over 6.5 is 1 13th. That's about 0 0.07. So you're going to get about 7.07 for 46 over 6.5. So you plug that in. You get uh, 6.5 plus 7.07 over 2. 6.5 plus 7.07 plus is 12.57. Divide that by 2, you get 6.785. And again, that's very, very close to the right answer, 6.78233. Pretty remarkable. Each time we're getting an answer that's only about a tenth of a percent off. And you can do this in your head. <laughs> Pretty amazing. And uh, and then, like I said, uh, you know, this 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 trick, the way I've presented it so far, um, this method really only works if, uh, if uh, you're taking a square root of a number between 1 and 100. What if you're outside of that? range. Well, then you just have to get it into that range by multiplying or dividing by the appropriate power of 100. So here's an easy example. What about the square root of 0 0.5? Well, to get it within the right range, we have to multiply it by 100. That'll give us 50. So this thing I'm calling x tilde, that's not the thing we really want to calculate the square root of, but we're going to have one step at the end, which is going to be to divide by 10. Since we multiplied x by 100, we're going to have to divide our final result of y by 10 to get the right answer. So anyway, let's do this uh, new problem. Uh, uh, x tilde is now 50.5 times 100. We want to take calculate the square root of 50. 
And you'll notice that 50 is just a little bit bigger than 7 squared, which is 49. It's between 7 squared and 8 squared, but you, you don't, probably don't want to split the difference in this case because it's so much closer to 49 than 64. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's only one more than 49, and there's a difference of 15 between 49 and 64. So let's try 7.1 um, is our initial guess. I think that's a much better initial guess. Let's see what happens if we do that. So here we're going to get uh, uh, 1 half times 7.1 plus 50 over 7.1. And uh, again, 7.1 times 7 is 49.7. That gives you a difference of 0 0.3. 0 0.3 over 7.1 is about z uh, 0.04. Um, so you're going to get 7.04 approximately for the quotient on the right. So now you just take 7.1 plus 7.04, that's 14.14. Uh, that should be a 4, not a 3. 14.14 4 over 2 is 7.07. And remember, like I said, there's one step remaining. We have to divide by 10. So if we do that, we get 0 0.707, which turns out to be very, very close to the correct answer, which is 0 0.70711. So again, this method works. Uh, and let's do uh, one final example here. I picked my phone number. <laughs> so this is a big number. We want to calculate the square root of 7,604,533,682. Um, that's a number in the billions. How will we calculate its square root? Well, same idea. We have to first factor out a power of 100 from this from this humongous number inside the square root. And uh, the, uh, the number we have to pick, the power of 100, turns out to be the fourth power. 100 to the fourth power is 100 million. So when we divide uh, the, um, the radicand, the inside of the square root by 100 million, we get within the range we want. We get x tilde equals x over 100 to the fourth power, which turns out to be 76.04533682. Um, so that's the thing we want to calculate the square root of. And now we can use Hero's method, Hero's method again. And uh, this time we note that 76 point so on is between 8 squared and 9 squared. 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81. So let's use the initial guess of 8.5. And now let's see what we get. Well, now this is going to be a harder calculation because we've got a very complicated uh, quotient on the right, but um, I can still do this in my head. I mean, let's not worry about all the decimal points to the right. Let's just start at the beginning. So pretend we're doing long division in our head, and it turns out that 8.5 times 9 is 76 point, uh, what is it? Yeah, 70, did I do that right? Something doesn't look right here. Um, it should be 76.5. I don't, I don't know what I did wrong here, but um, turns out that uh, um, the answer I get when I did this was 8.725. Um, and uh, I, might, I might have messed up a digit here. You might want to uh, check this yourself. But but the answer I got uh, using... Uh, using Huron's method is 8.725. And remember, we have to multiply the result by 10 to the fourth because we divided by 100 to the fourth to begin with. And that'll give us 87,250. And uh, the actual answer turns out to be about 87,204. So you can do this for any number you want. You know, you just have to, you know, if, if the number is not within the range from 1 to 100, you just have to uh, multiply or divide by the appropriate power of 100. And then when you're done, uh, you know, uh, divide or multiply by the same power of 10. So that's how that works. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that completes my video for tonight on uh, Huron's method for calculating square roots. Uh, um, thank you for watching. Um, long live math, and I'll see you guys next time.